Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. This is the restaurant table app booking video series and this is part 4 setting up .NET Core Web API and Entity Framework Core. In this video, I will be covering creating a new .NET Core 7 Web API project and then we will use a 4 layered architecture, the API project, core project, data project and service project. With these, We'll be using the SQL Server connection string from the previous video that we created and uh, we'll be setting up the Entity Framework Core and we will also use the .NET CLI tool using the scaffold command we will be able to create the models based on the database that we have and uh, we will up and run the simple project so that everything is connected and works. Come let's dive in. On my screen, I'm using Visual Studio 2022. You can use the lower version, but 2022 Visual Studio community version is free. So go and install it if you do not have it. And in the project selection, go and type the .NET Core Web API. And don't forget to choose the .NET Core version. And once you choose, provide your location where you wanted to store the project. And in the configuration, I'm choosing the latest version, the .NET 7 as of this recording. And for now, just leave the enable Docker section. We will come to this later and check all these things, right? So these things are uh, will resemble to the to the lower version of the .NET Core, the separate class and all those stuff, um, you know, and then all the swaggers will be set up by default. So choose all these options and we will talk about more why these options are coming up. And, uh, you know, once you hit on create, it will get created for me it is created here and I open up the project and I'm going to just rename this project to lsc.restauranttablebookingapp.api okay uh, nothing else I just forgot to give this name during the starting but what we are going to do is now we are going to create four three more projects okay we need to have these thing as a layered structure so that you are ready for the perfect developer right now the other three projects are the class library project. So once you search the library, it will give you the class library options. Choose the .NET Core version. Do not choose the .NET Framework library version. Okay, so that's the common mistake that we used to do. And then uh, the project name, I'm going to keep the same thing except the last uh, word. This time I will be using Core and then this also will support the same .NET Core 7. Uh, okay, that's the standard term support and uh, you know, I'm going to fast forward and create two more project which will be the data layer and the service layer. Okay, so we already created the core. I'm going to create two more project, the service and the data layer. Data layer is for the database and repository related stuff. Service will be handling the business logic layer which we will see down the line. And uh, so let's quickly create that. See. Those four projects are created and they're all sitting here. Great. And um, let's see. So in the program.cs, right, all everything is set up. The swagger is set up because of the .NET Core 7. If I run, the application is running. This is all thanks to the Visual Studio template. And with the template itself, with the basic setup, we were able to do it. Now let's go one by one and start doing the package installation. So go to the data project first. And because we're going to use the Entity Framework Core, I'll be choosing the package called Microsoft Entity Framework Core. Okay, as of this recording, July 2023, latest stable version is 7.09. So I'm going with the latest one. In case as we develop, we come across some breaking changes or anything, we'll solve it. So the next package is the Microsoft Entity Framework Core dot design. You install that package also because you'll be using uh, these packages uh, for our migration work. So let's install this. The next one is the SQL Server, right? So our uh, behind the scene for our database, it's SQL Server. So we need to have this package as well. Now all these packages, if you have noticed what I'm installing, right? Uh, they're all the same 7.0.9. Now we will also install the extension dot hosting dot abstraction. This is also required. So install these things and you can see these four packages coming into this project. And similarly, for the API project, we will be, uh, we'll have to use the Entity Framework Core. So go and install the similar packages here, not every single package, at least the Entity Framework Core tools. 
and the entity framework core all right so so the entity framework core tool is installed now it's time to set up the database so let's go to the app settings.json under that uh, for now we have just one development.json settings as when we go to production we will have the new settings added but here let's go ahead and add a section called connection string under the connection string there is another section called db context okay so here this is the name you can give a different name as well that's absolutely fine so it's a meaningful name i've given as db context but connection strings that's the standard name okay um, that's uh, so inside this db context i'm going to copy paste the actual working sql connection string okay if you're doing this you have to have your local connection string or the the database connection string which is in the azure okay make sure you have this right one if not a replication will not run so once you're done with that we will leave the rest of the app settings we will come so the next thing is under the data layer we need to create a db context class so we will name it as restaurant table booking db context which will inherit from a class called db context now under this data layer we already installed the date dot net uh, you know entity framework core packages that's why db context is from that package that's why it's coming up now ct or do a tab it will automatically create a constructor that's the shortcut that uh, you used to use uh, you know to speed up your development process so again i'll tell you it is ct or followed by a tab will create a constructor automatically of that class okay so now in this constructor what we are going to do is we are going to uh, pass in an option called db context option and that is of type the same class type which is the restaurant table booking db context now this is what called this option and then we will pass this option to the base class here the base represents the inherited db context so this options will be passed to this db context base class okay uh, that's why this is so if you go inside this dll you will be able to figure out but the option is to pass inside the inherited base class all right that's what it means line number 10 all right now let's go to this program.cs and in the program.cs what we are going to do is uh, we're going to configure the database connection string so there's a variable called builder already okay so if you do a builder dot services dot add db context it will come but uh, let's do let's let's forgot right so let's do for a second let's let's break for a second so i'm going to come in this line what i forgot is for this project which depends on the data project and then the code project and then the service project also so because of that you have to add the reference to those project like this so once you add the reference to these project what will happen is when you start using the classes which is inside those three project you'll be able to bring up those namespace automatically so i'll uncomment this now if i paste the name of the class right which is restaurant table booking db context see automatically it started recognizing right and then here what we are going to do is here we are going to pass the options okay the options are nothing but the connection strings and then any other database settings so here we will say we are going to use the sql server see if you type option dot you will also get to see you know add in memory or add some other packages and all those things so we are going to use sql server so we're going to see option dot use sql server followed by passing the configuration in order to fetch the sql server connection string that we have it in the in the app settings right we use configuration dot get connection string and then pass the um, db context the name of the property now here the configuration is nothing but builder dot configuration again don't get confused if you are coming from the older technology little older technology of this dot net code builder dot configuration is nothing but i configuration okay so once the the configuration section is passed right the right sql server connection string will be passed and then we are also going to add something called enable sensitive data logging 
do not use this method this is only for development purpose basically what it will do is as an NV develop if any database related issues comes you'll be able to see those errors up front on the console now let's check the year version so type dot net tool list dash dash global what it will do is it will list you what version of entity framework uh, you know the dot net tool version that you have like entity framework dot net ef uh, whatever you have installed it will show you and if you don't have it will it will not show you anyway so if you remember our project uh, we have the ef version 7.0.9 right so in, in order to install this you have to use dot net tool install dash dash global followed by dot net ef version 7.0.9 okay if you don't have those version if you just skip that it will install the latest one but for me it is already installed so i cannot use the same command if you are in the same position use the update command so dot net will update followed by the dash dash global and then if you specify dot net ef version it will install now if you go and do the same command it will tell you that it has been installed right so we are now in sync with what is the latest one right so now what we will do is we will open up the the location of this uh, data project okay in the command window so just type cmd in the location it will open that specific thing automatically right so you can you can already come to this location in the command prompt if you do that now what i'm trying to do is i'm going to use a particular command okay which is nothing but the sql uh, you know the dot net ef tool uh, using that there's a, there's a command called scaffold okay so dot net ef followed by the db context scaffold scaffold is a keyword okay followed by the connection string and then it will also specify it's microsoft entity framework dot sql server and then we are saying in a detached mode put all the classes inside a folder called model temp if if everything is good project will get built it will get connected to the database based on how we have configured in the project and after this we should see it would have connected the database retrieved all the metadata and it has created the classes for us there are a few uh, things that will be different with respect to the migration but i'll show you in this way and later we will also see the migration right what we are going to do is we are going to push these classes into a project called core core means all the entities will be present okay probably i should have created that in the core itself directly but it's okay i'm going to move all these things and i'm going to change the namespace of these classes okay so i just simply copied the namespace and i'm going to do a control f and uh, replace right so those six classes it should be under this correct namespace that's important okay if you're following just do the same thing all right so now we have six tables as six classes and then there is another class called restaurant table booking context okay now the data project also requires to have the reference to the code that's what we did similarly service will have a reference to the code as well as the data so let's go and add the code as well as along with the data now all these projects have their own respective uh, you know the project reference now what we have to do is come to this restaurant table booking db context class and we have to do a we have to configure the tables here so in order to do that there's something called db set db set and then db set of each table name and they when we say table name in c sharp context it is called entities okay so we are going to add these six entities as a db set so that whenever you use this context anything that is specified in this db set they are nothing but the table and the entity framework core will have access to those tables if you skip any one of those that specific table you will not have access okay that's what all about this db context configuration so the restaurant uh, entity is now configured I will be copying this and you know repeating this for five times and then change all the uh, rest of the five names to its correct values okay so now we have uh, we are on this first location 
let's copy paste five times because totally it is six entities one is restaurant and then the remaining is dining table reservation uh, what else we have the restaurant branches and all those things right so now we have changed or i would say we have added these six entities into the db set here which means um, you know the the command the scaffold command that we use right it has created the on model creating binding so basically what it what it did is the primary key the foreign key and then the minimum and the maximum value whichever is required like we had a uh, null, not null, all those things, right? They're all constraints. All those things that it, it read from the database and it added those as a condition here, right? So if you're doing the scaffold, it will do like that. But you know, the better thing to go is to have the data annotation for each of the classes, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, you know, put that on model creating here. Uh, and then we will try to build it and see what is happening. Actually, what we should do is we should not even have this. We should delete this. Okay. So let's stick to this. Okay. So let's have only the DB set here and let's go to each one of these entities and add quickly the data annotation. So if you consider this restaurant, right? So we have the name and address, which will have a 100 and a 200 characters maximum. And these two are like not null okay so i'm going to do this side by side what i'm going to basically do is i'm going to do this data mapping see you have to do all these things only because we are now doing the reverse engineering of the database if you have seen my videos we we always create from the model we migrate to the database but this time it is a reverse engineering that's why you have to do this first time but later in the video when we add a different table we will show you how to do the data migration from the model class to the database. That's so easy. Okay. Now, all what we are going to do is the ID. ID will be auto recognized as the primary key of a particular entity. In case your ID column is having a different name like restaurant ID instead of ID or anything else, you need to specify something called key, the data attribute. Right. So in our case, it's not required. So we are not going to do all what we are going to do is add the data annotation for the rest of the properties. Required data annotation will tell that name property is mandatory. Similarly, we also say the maximum character that is allowed is 100 because database also has only 100. Right. If you try to insert something more than 100, database will throw error. So in order to avoid those errors, we are doing this data annotation and protecting at, at the front itself. Okay, so we added all these things and wherever it is not required. In this case, the phone and email ID is not required. Actually, we should come back and change it. Uh, but let's quickly do the same thing for rest of the uh, classes like the restaurant, restaurant branch, uh, the time slots, all those things, right? So let's let's quickly do that. Now let's go to this reservation and, and we're going to start with here. We already spoke about the foreign key relationship, I would say the parent and the child, right? See, in this case, restaurant is one of the entity. And if you see the last line, it has a virtual of restaurant branch. Basically, that's what is called the parent and child relationship. Similarly, this table has the other two tables as child. That's why you're seeing I collection of dining table and the time slots. Okay, so this is called graph in terms of entity framework code. Okay, you can navigate from one table to another table if the links are correct. So all these things, if we start building and running, at least the application is not broken. It is running good. And I hope you enjoy this video. I will see you in the next video, the part five. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Happy coding!